Hello, everyone. Welcome to the presentation of the May Inflation Report. Here, we will give you an overview of the current macroeconomic developments, our new projections, and monetary policy decisions. Uh, the movements which marked not only the first quarter but all the previous months in 2018 have been marked by uh, low um, inflationary pressures, anchored inflation expectations, a sustained fiscal surplus in conditions of high growth of domestic GDP and credit growth, with an extended fall in the share of non-performing loans. In general, we can assess uh, the trends in previous months of this year as favorable, and we expect such trends to continue for the remainder of the year. GDP growth particularly stands out, given that according to the preliminary estimate of the Serbian Statistical Office, it accelerated considerably in the first quarter of 2018 to 4.5% year-on-year. The favorable structure of its sources is indicated by stepped-up growth of investment and activity in production sectors, primarily construction and manufacturing. In accordance with our expectations, during the first four months of this year, Year-on-year -year inflation decelerated significantly, largely due to the base effect, that is, the dropout of early 2017 one-off price hikes of certain products and services from the calculation. Consumer prices rose 1.1% year year-on-year in April, with core inflation of 0.8% year-on-year, which is below our expectations stated in the February inflation report. The reasons for this are primarily lower than expected import prices and low costs in food production. Coupled with lower inflation expectations, this confirms that inflationary pressures have additionally abated since the beginning of the year. Positive fiscal movements continued in the first quarter, with a fiscal surplus of 0.4% of GDP recorded in conditions of accelerated growth, higher corporate profitability, positive tendencies in the labor market, and more efficient tax collection. By structure, revenues increased mostly on account of excise taxes, allocated social insurance contributions, and profit tax, while on the expenditure side, the rise in capital expenditures is assessed as highly positive. Also conducive to the favorable fiscal result was the reduction in interest expenses in conditions of the government's subdued need for borrowing, monetary policy easing by the National Bank of Serbia, and the low country risk premium. As regards external economic relations, the current account deficit has been lowered by 6.3% year-on-year amid two-digit growth of goods and services exports as well as two-digit imports growth due to the economy's increased need for equipment and intermediate goods. In terms of structure, the financial account still recorded a high net inflow inflow of foreign direct investment, which was higher by around 2% year-on-year and boosted by the net inflow of portfolio investment. We estimate that the net inflow of foreign direct investment for the entire year will be around 2.6 billion euros. <laughs> uh, I, I want to say 2.6 billion, and it's, it was not the same as last year because net inflow was 
and total was 2.6 billion euros. This is because of the denarization. Since the start of the year, lending also posted accelerated growth to 7.5% year-on-year in March, sustained by the effects of past monetary policy easing, growing economic activity, and labor market recovery. Coupled with the activities on the resolution of non-performing loans, this was conducive to the continued reduction in the share of non-performing loans in total loans to 9.2% in March. This is a brief overview of developments in the first quarter. In the remainder of the year, we expect positive trends to continue. This is also indicated by our latest projections, according to which we will maintain low inflation in the next two years as well, under current assumptions. As for the economic growth forecast, we believe that economic policy measures are well calibrated and that they have created the basis for sustainable acceleration of GDP growth of around 3.5% in 2018 and in 2019. We also believe that there are grounds for growth to be even faster this year. But we still maintain our conservative assessment with the risk that that growth might be even higher than 3.5%. Uncertainty in the international environment emanates primarily from the commodity and financial markets. In the, previous, in the period since the previous report, developments in the international environment were marked by additionally improved prospects of global economic upturn, maintenance of low inflationary pressures despite the hike in the prices of primary commodities, notably oil, as well as increasingly diverging monetary policies of leading central banks. Although the recently published data indicate that growth in the euro area slowed down in the first quarter, dominant estimates suggest that the deceleration is temporary and that growth will resume this year at a similar pace as in 2017. In addition to favorable growth prospects of Serbia's other important trade partners, this should contribute to further growth in Serbia's exports. While global growth, growth forecasts are looking up, developments in certain markets are still veiled in uncertainty. The global commodity market recorded a continued rise in the prices of primary commodities, notably oil, whose price came at $78 per barrel in May, the highest since November 2014. The price of oil rose on the back of a sharp pickup in demand, triggered by accelerated global growth, as well as supply factors, primarily the leading oil exporters capping the production and geopolitical tensions. In addition, since the start of the year, the prices of primary agricultural commodities also increased, though to a lower extent. However, the futures and current projections by the relevant institutions indicate that after this year's growth, we can expect global prices of primary commodities to stabilize and then decline in 2019 and 2020. Using that as a starting point, we do not expect any major inflationary pressures on this account over the medium term. However, Bearing in mind the high volatility of oil prices in the prior period, as well as the fact that these prices are currently around 50% higher in year-on-year -year terms, it is our estimate that their movements require caution in making monetary policy decisions in the coming period as well. During the first quarter, uncertainty and volatility in the international financial market also increased. The character of monetary policies of leading central banks diverged further amid the still present uncertainty in terms of the pace of their normalization in the coming period and, in turn, movements in the dollar-euro relationship as well as capital flows towards emerging economies. Despite this, global financial conditions are still favorable. Um, it, it is a fact that there have been 
Um, it is a fact that there have been and there still will be external challenges going forward. We cannot impact them, but only mitigate their effects. Therefore, structural improvements of our economy and the narrowed internal and external imbalances have been of particular importance as they boosted our resilience to negative effects of global factors. In conditions of rising corporate profitability, positive tendencies in the labor market and higher efficiency of tax collection, favorable fiscal movements continued in 2018 as well, with a surplus of around 0.4% of GDP in the first quarter. The competitiveness of the Serbian economy also increased, reflected in the rise in exports of all areas of manufacturing. Growth measured 12.4% year-on-year, except the food industry, which was adversely affected by the diminished agricultural production in the wake of last year's drought. As many as 14 of the 23 areas of manufacturing recorded a high two-digit growth rate in exports in the first quarter. At the same time, the stepped-up pace of investment growth reflected on the higher imports of equipment and intermediate goods, which played a key role in total imports growth, 11.9% year-on-year. In addition, the net inflow of capital in the first quarter fully covered the current account deficit, contributing to the continuation of appreciation pressures in the foreign exchange market. As for the composi composition of inflows, foreign direct investment maintained a high inflow, post posting growth of around 2% year-on-year, and still channeled to export-oriented sectors. The foreign direct investment inflow was additionally boosted by por portfolio investment in conditions of non-residence investment in five- and ten-year dinar government securities. The net inflow of foreign direct investment, which is estimated at around 2.6 billion euros this year, will ensure the full coverage of the current account deficit for the fourth year straight. In the years ahead, we expect to maintain the full coverage of the current account deficit by long-term external sources of finance, which would support dynamic exports growth in the medium term. With this in mind, our assessment is that Serbia has remained on the path of lowering external imbalances over the medium run. Economic activity grew for the 10th consecutive quarter, exceeding our early year expectations in the first quarter. In such conditions, GDP growth accelerated in the first quarter, even more so than we expected in the February inflation report. According to our estimate, a key contribution to the pickup in growth to 4.5% year-on-year in the first quarter came from fixed investment. If the rise in total fixed, in total fixed investment continues at a similar pace for the remainder of the year, we estimate its share in GDP to reach around 22%. This is an important assumption for creating a basis for the acceleration of economic growth to around 4% in the medium run. Taking into account the further improvement in the business environment, favorable monetary conditions, faster implementation of infrastructure projects, and positive labor market trends, we estimate that growth will be driven by domestic demand, investment, and household consumption. We also expect that exports will retain double-digit growth rates on the back of earlier investment and the rise in external demand. We expect higher investment to also push up imports of equipment and intermediate goods.
Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I would like to conclude the first part of the conference with the actual and expected movement of inflation and the monetary policy measures adopted. In year-on-year -year terms, inflation has slowed down since the start of the year. The slowdown was anticipated and stated in the previous issues of the report, though it was stronger than expected. This resulted from lower dinner denominated import prices due to low inflation in the international environment and the dinner's appreciation in the previous period and from the still low food production costs. That inflationary pressures are still low is suggested also by core inflation, which declined to 0.8% year-on-year in March and April, its lowest level since changes in consumer prices have been used as a measure of inflation. Compared to the previous inflation report, short-term inflation expectations fell even more to 2.5% for the financial and 2.8% for the corporate sector, remaining anchored within the target corridor. These are the main reasons why the new medium-term inflation projection is somewhat lower than the previous one. After reaching this year's low in April, we expect inflation to gradually approach the target in the coming period, though this year it will remain close to the lower bound of the target tolerance band. We expect inflation to approach the 3% midpoint in the second half of 2019 and to remain stable around that level until the end of the projection horizon. In view of this, we expect inflation to remain low and stable in the coming period as well. In other words, in the medium term, year-on-year -year inflation will move within the target tolerance band of 3% plus minus 1.5% until the end of the projection horizon, that is in the next two years, also owing to a gradual recovery in domestic demand. Medium term inflation expectations of the financial and corporate sectors are also anchored at the target midpoint of the National Bank of Serbia. Monetary policy easing amid low inflationary pressures helps speed up lending and economic activity, which, along with the efforts to resolve non-performing loans, made the share of these loans fall below the pre-crisis level. By carefully monitoring and analyzing the developments in the domestic and international environment, we assess that the expected movement in inflation and its underlying factors going forward, along with the further strengthening of microeconomic fundamentals, allow for additional monetary policy easing. Accordingly, we decided to further cut the key policy rate in both March and April by 25 basis points to 3%. That is also its lowest level in the inflation targeting regime. Its sharp, period, uh, its sharp drop in the period since the monetary easing cycle began in May 2013 had a strong impact on the rise in disposable income, thus contributing to a faster recovery of domestic demand. We made the decisions on further monetary policy easing, taking into consideration not only that the February medium inf term inflation projection was lower than the previous one, both for this and next year, but also that inflationary pressures weakened further after the February projection. On the other hand, monetary policy caution was mandated by pronounced uncertainty in the international commodity market, mainly regarding the movements in oil prices. Caution was also required due to diverging monetary policies of the Federal Reserve System and European Central Bank. Monetary policy easing in the previous period significantly drove down interest rates on dinner loans in the past several years and created more favorable financing conditions. <clears throat> this and the effects of economic growth, positive labor market trends, increased interbank competition, a decline in the country risk premium, and low interest rates in the euro area 
contributed to further growth in lending activity, which, excluding the exchange rate effect, measured 7.5% year-on-year in March. <coughs> Since the beginning of the year, year-on-year -year growth in loans to corporates has accelerated further to 5.1%, while growth in loans to households slowed down slightly to 10.9%. In the conditions of stepped-up efforts to resolve non-performing loans and the rise in lending activity, the share of non-performing loans in total loans declined considerably since the strategy was implemented by 13.2 percentage points to 9.2% in March, below the pre-crisis level. Thus, the stock of these loans has been more than halved since the start of implementation of the strategy <coughs> by 55%, uh, undeniably pointing to intensified efforts made to resolve this issue. Looking ahead, in the coming period, monetary policy decisions will continue to depend on our assessment of the impact of inflation factors on the domestic and international environment. According to our estimate, key risks emanate from the international environment, which is why we will continue to closely monitor and analyze developments in the international financial market and the market of primary commodities and to assess their impact on economic developments in Serbia. As so far, we will use all our instruments to ensure low and stable inflation in the medium term. I believe that we believe that this, with the preservation of financial stability, is the best way for the central bank to contribute to sustainable economic growth and stronger resilience to external challenges. With this, I would like to conclude my introductory address and give the floor to my colleagues from the Directorate for Economic Research and Statistics, who will briefly present the latest inflation and GDP growth projections. What you will also hear from them is that, according to the new projections as well, in the coming period, we expect to fulfill our primary legal mandate, price stability, by ensuring low inflation within the target tolerance band against the backdrop of faster GDP growth, which we estimate at around 3.5% in 2018 and 19, and at around 4% in the medium run. Thank you for your attention. You will also have this uh, speech in print, so I will now give my colleagues the floor. I would like to thank the Governor, and as the Governor announced, I would like uh, to ask um, our colleagues who work on uh, the inflation report uh, to present um, the projections um, and uh, to give an overview of inflationary pressures, uh, GDP growth um, this year. Uh, Mira has prepared a short overview and uh, we hope you will like it. Uh, we hope uh, you will like the structure of the overview and its key messages. Thank you. Uh, before we start, uh, um, talking about the projection, inflation projection and GDP projection, uh, we will uh, give an, an overview of inflation movements uh, since the start of this year. As Anna has said, in this issue of the inflation report, uh, we also uh, wrote uh, a text box on this um, topic. Uh, you probably uh, have already seen that in the previous issues of the inflation report and in our regular press releases, we have have uh, communicated that since the start of this year we expect inflation to decelerate significantly on account of the dropout uh, of uh, one of um, uh, hikes uh, from early this year of some products and services from the calculation of year-on-year -year inflation. Uh, given this in mind, uh, we have uh, prepared charts that you can see uh, in the presentation and they show year-on-year -year, uh, growth in prices of some groups of uh, 
uh, products and services in December 2017 and in March uh, this year. Uh, why March? Uh, because at the moment of preparing the report, uh, we didn't have uh, data on um, April inflation. What you can see in these charts is that uh, uh, we have uh, shown around 70% of the consumer basket. We have selected uh, um, some groups of products and services. Uh, the very surface of the rectangle for each category uh, points out uh, their relative share in the consumer basket, whereas the color uh, indicates year-on-year -year growth uh, in the given group of uh, uh, products and services, that is, year-on-year -year growth in uh, prices of these um, products and services in December. Uh, we uh, saw a significant share of uh, those uh, uh, products uh, marked with uh, red, indicating uh, a year-on-year -year, uh, uh, rise in prices exceeding 3%, whereas in March this year uh, we can see blue uh, shades that indicate um, growth in prices of those groups of uh, products that is uh, uh, below 3%. So you can see that, for instance, uh, uh, vegetables have uh, changed the color uh, solid fuels, uh, lubricants uh, concerning uh, the prices of uh, petroleum products, uh, including uh, telephone services, for instance, uh, mobile um, um, telephone services and so on. Uh, vegetable prices in December, for instance, uh, grew by 10.7% uh, year-on-year, and uh, in March, their year-on-year -year growth equaled 0.4%, uh, um, meaning that uh, adverse weather conditions uh, early last year affected uh, the growth in prices prices of vegetables, and then we also had the drought, and they also affected uh, the rise in prices of solid fuels. Uh, whereas, for instance, when it comes to prices of uh, petroleum products, their year-on-year -year growth last year uh, it was relatively high, and it was conditioned uh, by a rise in uh, global oil uh, prices. The dropout from year-on-year -year calculation uh, of uh, the hikes in, these, uh, in prices of these groups of products and services affected the slowdown in inflation. When we take into account the overall consumer basket, around 76% of the consumer basket in March uh, saw a year-year -year rise in prices below 3%. But the governor has has already highlighted um, at the very start, uh, the, the acceleration in inflation uh, was also more vigorous than we expected. And um, uh, this was due to lower import prices expressed in dinars uh, due to the uh, effects of appreciation of the dinar and low inflation in the international environment, including the prices of fruits and vegetables early this year, um, uh, owing to the relatively mild winter this year. So uh, their hike was smaller than uh, uh, is customary for the season. Uh, we also had uh, 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 l relatively low food production costs maintained. When when we uh, compare uh, Serbian inflation with uh, the inflation of European countries uh, that also target inflation, this is shown in chart two. Uh, so we can see that uh, Serbia is in the group of countries uh, where inflation in March moved around a lower uh, bound of the target tolerance band. Uh, unlike this, we also have those uh, countries where inflation is moving above the target. Uh, so... Uh, very often, uh, estimates were given in the past that uh, the international factors were the key uh, factors affecting low inflationary pressures over the past several years, uh, meaning um, low inflation in the international environment and uh, low oil prices. Uh, this chart shows um, uh, something different, uh, namely um, an important impact on inflation comes from domestic factors as well. Um, because international circumstances affect all countries, in fact, whereas due to the fact that uh, um, the, 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 fact, the, the influence of domestic factors is different, some of them are inflationary, some of them is disinflationary, and the intensity of the impact is also different. Uh, inflation differs um, uh, by country. Uh, when it comes to Serbia, uh, owing to uh, full coordination of monetary and uh, fiscal policy measures, inflationary pressures have remained low, uh, which also enabled, uh, which ensured higher uh, efficiency of fiscal consolidation as well as the continuation of uh, uh, monetary policy easing. Uh, what you can also see in this, in, in chart number three, uh, is um, 
is the central projection of inflation for uh, 2018, uh, starting from May last year. So as you can see, uh, our central projection uh, for this year uh, it has been uh, increasingly lower uh, from one projection to the other, meaning that inflationary pressures have weakened further. This, is, this explains the fact why we continued uh, to ease uh, our monetary policy, whereas some central banks uh, are already uh, in the phase of uh, monetary policy tightening. Um, the fact is that since, uh, since the February inflation uh, projection, inflationary pressures have abated further, uh, whereas the February inflation uh, projection itself uh, was lower than the previous November projection. Action. So this actually explains why we continued uh, to further ease um, our monetary policy in March and April this year. Uh, now I would like uh, to um, uh, dwell on the inflation projection itself. Uh, so according to the, May, to the current May projection, we expect inflation uh, to move in the next uh, two years uh, within the target tolerance band. And uh, until the end of this year, uh, it will move most probably closer to the lower bound of the target tolerance band. And it's gradual um, uh, movement towards the 3% target is expected in the second half um, of the next year. So this will be um, uh, affected by the expected rise in domestic uh, demand and the gradual waning of the effects of uh, lower import prices. Um, uh, in the short run, uh, this um, uh, a, contri a contribution to this will come uh, uh, from uh, petroleum product prices as well. When we compare the current projection with the previous one, that is May projection with the February inflation projection, uh, you can see that the May uh, projection until the end of the projection horizon is lower than the February projection uh, on account of the lower achieved uh, growth in prices in the first uh, quarter, lower than uh, we uh, anticipated in the February projection. Uh, when you take a look at the risks to the projection. Uh, we estimated the risks uh, to be uh, symmetric and they uh, concern the movements in the international commodity market, primarily the prices of oil and primary agricultural uh, commodities, as well as, uh, to an extent, uh, administered prices and the success of this year's agricultural season. Uh, when it comes to oil prices, uh, we believe that the risks to the projection are uh, somewhat asymmetric uh, to the upside, whereas when it comes to administered prices, where we assumed that uh, uh, the growth uh, this and, uh, in the next two years will be around 4%. Uh, so here it is probable that growth will be somewhat lower than uh, we have uh, projected. So we believe that here risks are asymmetric to the downside. But overall, on balance, we believe that the risks uh, to the projection are symmetric. And once again, I would like uh, to reiterate that inflation in the medium term will continue to move uh, within the target tolerance uh, band, uh, meaning it will be low and stable. Now I would like uh, to give the floor to our colleague Milan, uh, who will give uh, a more detailed uh, overview uh, of the projection. Uh, so we believe that uh, it is important to, um, uh, folk, to, to uh, place an emphasis on GDP uh, this time. Uh, so in the public, um, different hypotheses uh, have been uh, put forward uh, for GDP uh, for the entire year or in quarterly terms. So we will try to answer these uh, questions. Uh, uh, so basically we have uh, five uh, key topics that we will try to cover in the following slides. First of all, why GDP growth? in the first uh, quarter was faster. Secondly, uh, what was uh, the base effect in respect of the low uh, base from the first uh, quarter of last year? The third topic is what does this mean for the entire year and for the projected rise of 3.5%? Uh, then uh, fourth, what about uh, the overall structure of uh, GDP? And the fifth topic is what about the share of investment in GDP? 
uh, when it comes uh, to GDP growth in the first uh, quarter. Um, uh, the, the, the first slide uh, speaks about this. What uh, I would like to emphasize is the following GDP growth in the first quarter equaled 4.5% uh, 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 year on year. It was faster than we, accept, uh, than we ex uh, expected. Uh, our initial expectations uh, showed that uh, the growth in the first quarter uh, should have been uh, around or uh, below 4%. So where is this difference? This difference lies in investment. Uh, so the difference between our initial estimates and our current uh, estimates are investments. Uh, so what we accept, expected uh, initially, uh, initially is uh, the rise in investment of uh, 10% in GDP growth of 1.8%. Uh, now we have investment rising uh, by around 16.5% uh, and a contribution of 2.9% uh, uh, percentage point. Uh, so the contribution of investment has been higher. So uh, we have a rising uh, construction equaling around uh, uh, 25%, uh, the import of equipment of around uh, 25%, uh, and uh, the production of domestic equipment around 8%. We also have similar movements when it comes to the uh, sources of funding investment. For the second year in a row, uh, we have seen uh, uh, doubled uh, profitability of uh, the domestic corporate sector, uh, then the rise in uh, new investment loans of around uh, 20 and uh, we have also seen a further rise in FDI. Uh, so what is also important to emphasize is that we had somewhat a faster uh, rise in uh, consumption uh, because of the faster recovery of the labor market in the private sector and when it comes to, but, uh, when it comes to employment and wages in the private uh, sector. Uh, what is very important is that we have seen a continuation of a double-digit uh, rise in exports of uh, services and goods, uh, and um, exports are rising uh, faster. I will explain uh, why. Uh, so we have seen a similar or even uh, uh, a more striking situation than uh, last year of overall uh, growth in imports uh, in the first quarter, around 60% uh, uh, goes to intermediate goods, uh, uh, especially raw materials for in industry. Then we have equipment, and on the third place, we have a rise in imports of consumer goods, accounting for around one-sixth of the growth in imports. That is, one-sixth of uh, the growth in imports uh, goes to uh, consumer goods. And uh, uh, when it comes to the first quarter, we have to elaborate on the base effect. We can claim with certainty uh, that uh, within uh, the growth of uh, 4%, uh, 0.3 uh, percentage uh, point uh, um, goes to agriculture and 0.5 percent goes to the energy sector due to the low base. Uh, that is 0.8 percentage points of the overall growth of 4.5 uh, percent. Uh, in the next uh, slide, uh, you, ha uh, you can see uh, what does this mean for the overall year. That is the projected growth of 3.5%. Uh, uh, so we maintained uh, the central projection of 3.5%, uh, but we revised our uh, risks, uh, risk uh, uh, assumptions, so meaning, meaning that risks are asymmetric to the upside. Uh, so we, had, uh, we have um, uh, growth in investment of 8%. Investment uh, can rise even at a two-digit uh, pace, uh, right? Uh, reaching uh, the share of uh, 22 percent of GDP uh, for this year. We also revised uh, the projected uh, growth structure for this year in favor of investment and consumption at the expense of imports. Uh, and as I said, uh, in the initial projection, investment rose by uh, five percent. Now it is eight, uh, around eight percent, with the possibility of this growth uh, being given faster. When it comes to other risks to the projection, they're generally symmetric. Uh, concerning uh, the pace of growth of the euro area, our main uh, foreign trade partner, and movements in, interna in, in international commodity and uh, um, financial markets. When it comes uh, to the risks at home, uh, both to the upside and to the downside, uh, risks uh, um, concern uh, this year's agricultural season. Uh, this year we used uh, an average uh, season of around uh, uh, 4 to 5 percent or the contribution of
of around 0.3 percentage points. And uh, finally, the fifth uh, topic concerns investment and its share in GDP. So chart uh, nine shows that in the past uh, three years, uh, the average rise in investment was uh, 5.6 percent, uh, uh, and their share in GDP uh, uh, growth uh, rose from 18.5 uh, percent in 2014 to around 20 last year. And uh, at uh, at an 8% uh, uh, rise, uh, their share will reach certainly 21.5%. If these tendencies continue, as the governor highlighted, uh, uh, the share of investment will reach even 22%, meaning that the risks uh, that we see materialize if we have these uh, tendencies uh, continue. Uh, what you can see in chart number 10 uh, are uh, private and government investments. Uh, when it comes to private investments, last year uh, they uh, rose uh, at the fastest uh, rate uh, over the past uh, 10 years. They rose at 9%. A similar pace will continue this year. Uh, this year, government investments will uh, rise as well. In the first quarter, uh, they, uh, uh, capital expenditures uh, rose at a three-digit uh, rate. And uh, I will uh, stop here. If you have any questions regarding uh, uh, these slides, uh, please uh, be free to ask. Uh, now I would like to ask uh, our colleague uh, Mirko Djukic when it comes to oil prices and the impact of oil prices on our projections. Uh, low and stable inflation is a bit boring and uh, Mirko has not spoken recently. So perhaps Mirko can say a few words about this. Uh, global oil prices grew, which is included in our new projection, with, as one of the factors that will uh, help inflation come back to the target. <clears throat> we assess that uh, the increase in prices of petroleum products combined with the low base effect to contribute to a rise in year on year inflation by around 0.3 percentage points. Uh, what's more, since we concluded the projection, uh, in several in recent weeks, uh, the uh, this price global oil price grow, grew even more, so this effect would be even higher. However, these effects will not be dramatic. <coughs> they should not be overemphasized. Uh, general estimate is uh, that uh, the growth will be around 10 percent, driving uh, inflation up by 0.1 to 0.15 percentage points. So currently this uh, growth in global oil prices uh, is only helping inflation come back to the target, but not to overshoot the target. Milan uh, uh, Pink. Uh, two days ago I talked about this topic of uh, oil prices. So what I heard from the oil traders is that the barrel has reached $79, uh, Euro diesel is one point, uh, 161, and they say that uh, there are no basis for retail prices to reach this price. So you as the price that monitors uh, prices, have you noticed this anomaly where traders unreasonably ra raise their um, retail prices compared to crude oil prices? And have you minimized the impact of that? Because all of us know that traders, uh, as soon as euro diesel prices increase, they increase retail prices using that as a justification. So honestly, in recent months, we did not notice any significant increase in the price of petroleum products uh, that would be expected based on oil prices uh, globally. So in recent months, this was uh, ordinary, the transfer of effects, so there are no significant inflationary effects. Uh, so we don't know what will happen in the coming period, um, but let's be honest, we have not experienced stronger inflationary factors on that account than we would expect based on historical trends. So please allow me to use this uh, topic as uh, a reason to say why this uh, communication between the MBS and the energy importers was important for uh, there not to be any justified or unjustified uh, volatility 
in these terms. So what we should say is that uh, the largest energy importers, which is uh, NIS and Serbia Gas, uh, they communicate extremely well with the National Bank particularly with their uh, with regard to their activity in the FX market even when uh, oil prices are growing and uh, the dollar is uh, strengthening in the global market and when there are higher needs to purchase FX by the largest importers of energy uh, we have good communication with these companies who are in advance announcing uh, their transactions which does not affect uh, the uh, trends in the market because this is uh, well distributed uh, over days or even months and there is no con uh, con concentrated effect on the FX movement, FX rate movement. Do you think this is justified? Um, the fact that the uh, growth in the exchange rate uh, the growth in primary commodity prices, which has some share in the formation of a price of a product. This is the usual practice for uh, factoring uh, prices into retail prices, and this is justified. But when the prices globally are dropping, prices of uh, primary commodities, when the exchange rate is dropping, this effect is not seen on falling prices. This is not an anomaly. This is something that is normal and possible in market economy. It's permissible. And it talks about the responsibility of those who have a monopoly or cartel position or those who have competition. So this kind of responsibility to uh, for these prices to reflect quickly on retail prices, this responsibility is borne by the uh, manufacturers and the and those who sell their products, especially with, when it comes to oil. But we have mentioned the topic of margins, um, of um, a narrow view on total flows, when the sellers look at o only at their own benefits. And it is up to us, uh, as the National Bank and you as the media, to uh, see all these pressures uh, to, to, to see that they do not have sharp impact on prices. Uh, as, uh, so not all inflation is bad, but sudden and unexpected inflation is bad when it comes to its amounts. So we all need to be moderate and to act responsibly, sometimes mostly in terms of good communication. Leona Marcic, Tanyuk. Public debt is um, below the Maastricht standard, 59%, uh, I believe, is the latest data, uh, meaning its share in GDP. Some say that this standard corresponds uh, to, uh, is uh, suitable for strong European economies uh, uh, and is not suitable for our economy, meaning that our public debt should have a smaller share in GDP. Uh, but uh, what I have seen is that uh, uh, the parent banks uh, uh, broad, parent banks of some banks that uh, operate here in Serbia, uh, deal uh, with the maturing of that in the fourth quarter uh, this year. They speculate um, about whether Serbia will have to enter the international uh, Dutch market to settle its obligations. And if I'm not wrong, uh, do not take it amiss. I believe it's uh, a billion dollars or euros. I know these are not the same proportions, but I don't remember the currency. Yes, it's the, do it's the dollar, uh, meaning that we will have to uh, uh, incur debts again and that our public debt will be higher. I ask for your comment. I don't know who will uh, speak about this in more detail, but if there is something that uh, Serbia can uh, boast about at this moment is the responsible attitude uh, towards uh, the level of public debt, uh, its structure and uh, its origin as well. Uh, when I uh, uh, say uh, origin, I, uh, when I say the currency, I'm referring to the currency uh, structure. And when I talk about its origin, I'm talking about responsible borrowing, uh, meaning uh, borrowing uh, for the sake of investment, uh, which is justified. And in the long run, it um, uh, results in higher yields. If the government of Serbia, um, uh, if it has over 50% for the maturing of the bond that you're talking about, uh, 
uh, the dollar denominated debt if it is already insured Uh, a headache, actually, uh, given the unfavorable conditions uh, in the international uh, uh, market. Uh, so, it, actually, this debt is about to mature in December, and if we need to illustrate uh, something more, um, uh, and uh, meaning that Serbia is really responsible, it does not uh, think about the criteria, it thinks about uh, long-term sustainability for the Republic in terms of the match of the balancing uh, between revenues and expenditures. Our debt uh, fell to 57% uh, last uh, year, and now it is 59%. It changes depending on the currency structure. We do not expect stronger depreciation pressures because we will have uh, no uh, new uh, numerous issues of dinner bonds, uh, and uh, non-residents will not enter our dinners, and this will not generate appreciation pressures. We also do not expect that we will have any favorable conditions in terms of the, the weakening of the dollar. The dollar has started to strengthen, and these are the reasons for us and for the government to deal with dinar sources of lending, and uh, we are happy uh, to be able to estimate that uh, GDP growth uh, is estimated not only in terms of credit growth, but also in terms of own sources of funding and investment from what we call saved uh, income. In the same way uh, the Republic of Serbia behaves and uh, 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 The National Bank of Serbia is particularly happy about this because this coordination between monetary and fiscal policies is uh, exceptionally important in terms of closing uh, the gap in the financial account and for the financing of the deficit. Uh, and uh, this is uh, highly realistic. Uh, uh, for the past uh, four, four years, we have covered the overall deficit by uh, FDI. And uh, until uh, the government is behaving in the current way, we need not worry here at the central bank as uh, part of uh, the citizens and uh, the overall state. And citizens shouldn't uh, be worried as well. Uh, they, uh, we have a resp responsible way of borrowing and we are lowering the debt of uh, the corporate sector. I would like to add the following. The governor said that the major part, around uh, 50% of the maturing of the, uh, the bond, uh, which is about to mature on the 3rd of December this year, this has already been uh, covered. We have to emphasize that uh, the bulk of this already insured part is financed from dinars, and uh, partly this comes uh, from excess revenue compared to expenditure of the government, and uh, public debt has, reduced in this, has been reduced in this regard when it comes to the part financed from dinars, meaning uh, from borrowing in the domestic market. This was financed at more favorable conditions than the conditions uh, that this bond has Had, and uh, it was financed uh, from dinars, meaning uh, that the dinar share of public debt is rising in total debt, meaning that the government is less exposed uh, to the FX risk, uh, that is to the movements uh, uh, in the relationship between the euro and the dollar. We have seen a, pu a pure reduction in the debt and we have a more favorable structure of uh, public debt as well. Uh, one more question. Um, When it comes to the IMF, if we increase pensions, uh, what would be the effect on consumption? Uh, consumption was factored in uh, uh, this year, and uh, when it, uh, and uh, we are wearing uh, all the um, uh, apparel collections. Uh, I have say because we haven't seen an impact on inflation. So, what would be the effect of uh, uh, pension increase? Uh, and uh, are there any other suggestions on the part of the IMF in this regard? Uh, so we are still talking about uh, possible details of a possible arrangement, a non-financial and advisory arrangement with the IMF. Uh, what I can emphasize and take pride in is the fact that the central bank uh, supports uh, the government in terms of uh, conducting uh, monetary policy, but on, not in terms of dealing with somebody else's job or uh, by transferring uh, own problems to somebody else's uh, yard. So this is the job and the responsibility of the government to when It comes to us, all planned and achieved increases of pensions and wages uh, uh, were communicated in time with the government included in our projections, and they do not jeopardize our 
primary objective. On the contrary, they help uh, with the recovery of domestic uh, uh, demand. Uh, uh, if the government, uh, government decides uh, to do this, uh, so this problem uh, has been tackled uh, by the public uh, in a grotesque way, I can say, and then we will be able to talk about this. Uh, we finish our jobs uh, uh, at a conference uh, tables uh, with our partners such as the IMF and the media uh, are here to inform about uh, the decisions made by uh, responsible people. And uh, once I even uh, made Mr. James Rowe uh, justify himself uh, about this topic leaking to the media because it is good for certain issues to be tackled by those who are competent uh, for uh, such uh, issues. Please do not take it amiss, but uh, be we're just being consistent uh, when it comes to other participants in the public life and uh, in the job that we deal with, uh, respecting the IMF, the government, pensioners, and those uh, who have justi justified and unjustified expectations as well. Anna, do you want to say a few words? Thank you. Uh, just yesterday, this morning, we analyzed the structure of uh, imports of consumer goods. And when it comes to clothing, you mentioned Zara, that we wear old clothes. We have 16.5% quarterly growth of imports of clothing. Um, imports of footwear is also on the rise, as is the ri imports of pharmaceuticals. This is the rise in uh, living standard, which can be seen from the imports of consumer goods. And if I can add something for public debt and the currency structure of public debt, upon the maturity of this mil billion euro, uh, dollars, the share of uh, USD in public debt will fall to around 24%. Last year it was 31.2%. This is where we, our exposure to currency debt is reduced. And uh, as the governor and Nicola mentioned, uh, with regard to monetary policy and its impact on the decline in interest expenses, when you look at the 10-year 10 10 year dinar security, its interest rate is 4.9%. Uh, it was first issued in October 2014. It was 13%. This is a huge decline of over of 8.1 percentage points. It was uh, driven by the accommodation of monitor the monetary policy and overall macroeconomic environment and its improvement. So all this taken into consideration, this uh, a solid growth can be seen from all these indica indicators. Uh, these uh, fixed funds, uh, uh, th these are the pension funds, or this was not really clear. Uh, in investment in GDP, their the formal statistical uh, name is investment in fixed funds, fixed investment. So this uh, share of investment is that. Uh, this is investment, the fi fixed investment, so in construction, in buildings, equipment, um, part of uh, investment of households and many other uh, smaller categories. Thank you for your question. This is a new term. Uh, everything not contained in our inflation report that you received will be up on the website, along with everything presented on these slides that uh, show Serbia's position with regard, as, as compared to other inflation targeting countries. Uh, so all these shares and contributions of certain products and this structure where we want to emphasize that the growth in exports, in total exports, uh, is, uh, has only one-sixth of uh, consumer goods. So I, I knew this uh, when I was told this. You, you can see that uh, the effects of privatization of our production capacities, uh, we don't have uh, a quality domestic toothpaste or qu perfume factory. You have uh, imports of perfumes uh, rising by 5% and 11% uh, in clothing 
accessories. Uh, when the standards grow, all of us have this human need to buy something that is, uh, we can say, luxury. But this is not luxury because this is our natural need. And this is because they, we cannot buy this at home because no one can produce that at home. Or what you want to buy here is encumbered by such margins that it is simply, it, it is simpler to import them as individuals do or from imports of those who cannot travel abroad. So this can be seen, uh, this is where we see this growth. So I want to say this, we will not be pressured by growing imports into thinking whether we should uh, support by our uh, FX policy corporates or exports in any way. As, uh, the economy and corporates are supported by uh, the economic costs and not um, affecting uh, the exchange rate policy because that would certainly damage someone. So we want relative stability. We want this to be where all the interests of, of all are met. Uh, we are not worried by rising imports because uh, these are imports of uh, equipment and intermediate goods whose effects we will see through future higher exports. And we are lucky that, uh, the, uh, that exports are diversified. So uh, large exporters who want to uh, get fewer dinners for what they export. Uh, overall, uh, macroeconomic indicators show that we have positive trends. If you don't have any further questions, um, we would like to thank you. We are uh, at your disposal, if you have any uh, dilemmas or questions, thank you.